The glory of the Lord is here. Why is the glory of the Lord here? Why? Because there's somebody here that loves Jesus and likes, likes him to be around. Glory to God and that wonderful promise of Jesus is fulfilled. What a difference there is. When my sister and I got into Pentecost, we often spoke of it. My, what a difference. Sister Shelley speaks of it. What a difference. We used to go to church. Thank God for that. It was quite wonderful. But what a difference when we came to Jesus and he came to us. And he really got hold of us. And he really revealed himself to us. And that's what he means. And that's why a meeting like this must be different. If there are only two here that really want the Lord. Really want him bad enough for him to manifest himself. His heart is full of joy. Why oh, remember how he said to his disciples, You now have sorrow. But I'll see you again. That's a wonderful word. And then your heart will rejoice. And your joy, nobody's going to take from you. That word, I'll see you again. We say in German, Auf Wiedersehen. And we say in French, Au revoir. And we say in Italian, Arrivederci. <laughs> and in Chinese we say Sai Chen. And in Swiss we say with the Luga. I'll see you again. And when he came, the Bible says, they were glad to see him. Why that was the only thing that could make them glad was his presence. And then he said, and I will remain with you in your joy. No man taketh from you. But that is a mystery that lots of people don't understand because they don't want him bad enough or maybe they don't believe in him. Here he manifests himself through faith. Faith is substance. Now scientists are teaching us something about substance that cannot be seen. And the Bible told us that 2,000 years ago. We understand by faith that everything that's visible is made out of invisible things. That which is visible is temporal, but that which is invisible is eternal. And while Jesus Christ came in the power and person of the Holy Ghost after his resurrection, he didn't mean not to be recognized. He meant to manifest himself much more powerfully, much more mightily than he was able to do when he was visible. And that's the joy, he says, no man taketh from you. I suppose I've been one of the happiest persons in the whole world now for 50 years since Jesus came, really came to me, because I don't care for anything in heaven or on earth but Jesus. And he never disappoints me. That is the wonderful thing. He's always with me and always within me. And no matter how the storms howl, and no matter what conditions are like, and no matter what people will do and say, there is a hiding place in the Lord Jesus Christ, which he spoke of to Thomas. And you know, Thomas said, I won't believe unless I can put my fingers in his nail prints. I want tangible proof of his resurrection. And Jesus gave him that proof. But he says, you're a foolish boy. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And Peter learned that lesson. Whom having not seen, ye love. Children of God, the glory of the Lord is here because Jesus is here. Really and truly, the very same Jesus. And the great tragedy is that we're satisfied with a little feeling maybe. Or a little song. Or a little sermon. And we don't really 
Press through to know him and the power of his resurrection. That's why we have this New Testament that shows us the way. And there's only one way. It's the way of faith. Living faith and living faith can only come from this great fountain. This wonderful word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by preaching. And when the word of God is preached in the power of the Holy Ghost, it wants to open the gates of the temple. <laughs> Those gates that have been rusty have been shut so long. Now the Holy Ghost gets hold of a crowbar. And not really, you know. But he gets them open. And those gates of the temple are the gates of your being. Oh, this wonderful, marvelous being. Some of you high school students study biology. You don't know anything about biology until you know something about the inner man. This wonderful creature which God calls the temple of the Holy Ghost. And Jesus Christ really takes possession of this temple, fills it with the power of his resurrection. Oh, my Lord and my God, we've only started on this shining pathway, and God wants to draw us into the knowledge of the Son of God, and every meeting ought to make us more homesick, ought to create in us a greater desire for Jesus. That's what Paul was working on. When he said that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And again and again Jesus shows us himself walking in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. John saw him like that and he fell at his feet as dead. And Jesus said don't fear. I'm he that was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. And now let him that hath ears hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. The Word of God will quicken that sight of mine, will give me a vision. <laughs> oh, my Lord, you said, I'll, I'll see you again. And he said another thing that we ought to take to heart. He said, the world seeth me no more. Don't be surprised at the black unbelief you find in the world and in the worldly church. The God of this world is busy working overtime to blind the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ should shine unto them. But unto us God hath revealed them by his Spirit. And he says, because I live, you shall live also, and you shall see me. And I know there are people in this meeting who have seen him. Somebody said to me, do you really see the Lord? I said, certainly. I couldn't live this life at all if I couldn't. Oh, my Lord and my God will anoint our eyes with Isaac. That Holy Spirit who is here tonight is God himself, the living God the resurrected Son of God, and he's got power to subdue all things unto himself. Let us open the gates of the temple tonight and really let him, this present Savior, have his way.